Welcome to Friends and Fiction, four New York Times bestselling authors, endless stories. Novelists Mary Kay Andrews, Kristen Harmel, Christy Woodson Harvey, and Patty Callahan Henry are four longtime friends with more than 70 published books between them. Together, they host Friends and Fiction with author interviews and fascinating insider talk about publishing and writing to highlight and support independent bookstores. They discuss the books they've written, the books they're reading now, and the art of storytelling. If you love books and you're curious about the writing world, you're in the right place. Hello, hello, my friends. It is Wednesday night and it is time for another episode of Friends and Fiction. We're really looking forward to tonight, so let's get started. I'm Kristen Harmel. I'm Christy Woodson Harvey. And I'm Mary Kay Andrews. And this is Friends and Fiction, four New York Times bestselling authors, endless stories to support indie bookstores, authors, and librarians. And yes, we know you're probably counting three and wondering why we're saying four. <laughs> Patty is out tonight, Patty uh, Callahan Henry. She is off celebrating independent booksellers in New Orleans with SEBA, the Southern Independent Booksellers Alliance. And you know that that's something that means a lot to us to support uh, indie booksellers when and where we can. In fact, I'm actually going to um, the California Independent Booksellers Alliance. Uh, I'm trying to go <laughs> Kaliba, whatever, <laughs> whatever that stands for uh, this, this weekend. So um, I think that means a lot to all of us. We do a lot with independent bookstores. So tonight we're going to be talking with Christina McMorris, who was actually one of the six authors on the initial call that led to the founding of Friends in Fiction in April of 2020. She was, con she was considering joining us as one of the hosts at the time, but she was ultimately too busy with the book project she was working on. But guess what? That book is finally here. It's The Ways We Hide. It came out yesterday, and we will be talking with her about it tonight. So she's like family to us, and we're so glad to welcome her home. Also up tonight, I will be revealing the cover of my 2023 novel, The Paris Daughter. I'm so excited. It's so pretty, you guys. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm so excited. I can't wait to, like, see it in real life. Yeah, you know, let's yeah. talk about it a lot before anyone's seen it. <laughs> but um, speaking of independent booksellers, you know that we continue to encourage you to support independent booksellers when and where you can. And one way to do that is to visit our own friends and fiction bookshop.org page where you can find Christina's books and books by the four of us and our past guests at a discount. We also want to share something this week that's near and dear to our hearts at Friends and Fiction. You may remember, if you've been with us this year, that Mary Kay's daughter, Katie, a 39-year-old mother of two, passed away suddenly in February due to complications from COVID. One of the beautiful things about Katie was how incredibly generous she was with her time, her heart, and her resources when it came to helping organizations in her native Atlanta that supported people less for fortunate than she. And we were very moved to learn this week that one of those organizations, Helping Mamas, Inc., is honoring Katie's memory by renaming their Safe Sleep and Ride program. In the spirit of Katie's commitment to providing families in need with a helping hand, Helping Mamas launched, launched the Katie Trocheck Able Safe Sleep and Ride program during National Child Passenger Safety Month. And um, we were just all really excited to get to be a part of that. And we thought that you guys might want to be too. Um, and MKA, if you do you want to tell us a little bit about the program, if you can? Yeah, yeah. I'm drinking wine. So I hopefully uh, can be chill enough to do that without, you know, sobbing. You know, Katie believed in helping others. And she had a special heart for... Um, families with not enough food, food insecurity, and of course, moms, always moms. Yeah. So all of us, and we are all moms, we know that uh, how vital car seats and pack and plays are to providing a safe environment for kids. The problem is that both car seats and pack and plays are expensive and they can be cost prohibitive to families living in poverty. 
right here in Georgia, where I live, 22% of children under the age of three live below the poverty line. And Jamie Lackey, the founder and CEO of Helping Mama, says that other than diapers, their two most requested items are car seats and pack and plays. Since these items are so costly, Helping Mamas usually only has a few, if any, each week to distribute. Now, thanks to this program named in Katie's honor, you can purchase a pack and play and or a car seat through Goodler, which will be delivered directly to the Helping Mamas warehouse here in Atlanta to be distributed to a local family in need. Or you can make a monetary donation, which they'll use to purchase supplies for families. I cannot think of a better way to honor Katie's memory. Yeah, it is um, really an amazing tribute to her. And, you know, I did want to let you guys know that earlier this week, I found out um, in, a, in a scary way on my phone that if you click add all to cart, you can actually <laughs> fund the entire program with one click on Apple Pay. So I was happy to donate. I don't think that the $51,000 in my phone. <laughs> Oh, actually. It's so generous of you, Christy, and, and not unexpected that you would donate one thousand dollars to car seats. I think place. that check would have bounced, but you know. <laughs> from day one. She was our yeah. original Sean, the one that got us online and kept us straight, made sure Mary Kay had her lipstick on and her hair fixed. And we hope that you'll consider making a donation to this program because we literally would not have Friends in Fiction without yeah. her, period, end of story. So there's an easy link right under announcements or featured on our Facebook group page right now. And so um, we just encourage you to do that. It's just a really special program and it's super easy and a nice way to really help moms and honor Katie and our MKA at the same time. So, yes. Well, switching gears just a little bit in our night of announcements and good news. Um, we are so excited to share one more special thing, which is, as we've teased, the cover for Kristen's next novel, <laughs> The Paris Daughter, coming in June 2023. I don't know how we can do a cover reveal without Patty to do the drum roll. I know, I know. We're just, yes. I can do drum rolls. Okay. Hit it, hit it, Mary Kay. All right, are you ready? Yeah. Well, no, wait, do you want to do it? Yeah, do you want to tell us about the book first? Oh, I guess I could just, well, okay. So here, I'll, I'll say I'm just excited to share this cover. The designer okay. who works, yeah. So the designer who works on my covers at Simon & Schuster is, uh, she's just incredible. I've been so happy with her work on my last few books. But I, this one is just I don't know. This one just feels special to me. I, I, I'm going to show it to you in one second, but I love the Eiffel Tower in the background. I love the mother and the daughter. I love the vague sense of impending separation. The warplanes flying overhead. Okay, I think now, Mary Kay, we are ready for our drum roll. Ready. ready? Sean, can you show us the cover? Yay! Yay! <laughs> so... You guys, I love the gold. Oh, I know. Me too. Yeah. Me too. And I'm excited to see it. I mean, I have the the arc right now, like the, the right. advanced um, copies, but I'm excited to see the gold pop, like, you know, in June when it finally comes out. So the yeah. Paris daughter is the story of Elise and Juliet, who are two young mothers to be who meet and become dear friends in Paris just before World War II begins. Juliet owns a little bookstore in the suburbs, while Elise is an artist whose famous artist husband is getting increasingly involved with an underground communist movement. Things go terribly wrong, and when Elise must flee the Nazis, she also must make the wrenching decision to leave her daughter, Mathilde, behind. She leaves her in the safest place she can imagine with Juliet, whose own daughter Lucy is Mathilde's best friend. But when a bomb falls on Juliet's bookstore, the store is reduced to rubble in an instant, and not everyone lives. Meanwhile, Elise is in South Central France, helping on an escape line in the village of Orignon, which you may remember from the Book of Lost Names. So the heroic priest from that book even makes a cameo appearance. So when the war is over at last, Elise returns to Paris to reclaim her daughter, only to learn that Juliet survived along with just one little girl.
but which little girl? Juliet has vanished without a trace, and Elise's desperate search for answers ultimately leads her to New York and to Juliet one final fateful time. So that's the story. It's coming in June of 2023. And you can pick up The Paris Daughter wherever books are sold. It just went live today. So I believe it might only be on Amazon, Barnes and Noble and IndieBound right now. Um, but other links should be up by Friday. And of course, you can ask your local indie bookseller to order it for you. Or easiest of all, you can grab it as part of the Friends in Fiction 2023 subscription box from our friends at Booktown. Woohoo! Look at that snazzy new graphic. Woo! Love it. Oh, oh, oh Mary, Mary Kay, you're, you're, you're muted. muted. <laughs> you're cuted is what I said. Yeah. You're well, cuted. You are you're cuted too. After my uh, dramatic drum roll, it set off my three dogs barking. So <laughs> thank you so that we didn't have a symphony of uh, setter barking. Okay. Now let's talk about our new Friends in Fiction first edition box. It is available now from the indie bookstore, Booktown in Manasquan, New Jersey. And it features signed hardback first editions from all four of us in 2023 and a friends and fiction kitchen towel that says dinner can wait. It's time for friends and fiction. You can order the friends and fiction first edition box right now at booktown.com. That is booktown with an E at the end. And just to remind you, the first book uh, will... Christy's book is first out of the shoot. Is that April, Christy? Yep, April 25th. Okay, so you guys need to gear up and get your order in. That's right. All right, ladies. Shall we get to our friend Christina McMorris now? Let's do it. Yes. Yeah. All right, Mary Kay, you want to dive in with the well, intro? I'm sorry. I'm listening. Okay. I'm listening to typing. Christina McMorris is... <laughs> is a New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and USA Today best-selling author of several novels, including Bridge of Scarlet Leaves, The Pieces We Keep, The Edge of Lost, and Sold on a Monday. Her novels have earned more than two dozen prestigious awards and nominations, including RWA's Rita Award, the Impact Dublin Literary Award, and a Goodreads Choice Award for Best Historical Fiction. Her books have also been translated into multiple languages and appeared compilations by Reader's Digest, Doubleday, the Literary Guild, and more. Christina graduated from Pepperdine University with a BS in international marketing, and she is also a frequent guest speaker and workshop presenter. She lives near Portland, Oregon, is the proud mom of two teenage boys, one of whom just went off to college for the first time, and as I hear, is doing amazingly and already has a million friends, and of course, is studying nonstop, I am sure. <laughs> she is a longtime and dear friend to all of us here at Friends in Fiction. Christina's new novel, The Ways We Hide, was just released yesterday. We are so excited to celebrate with her today. Sean, can you bring Christina on? Hey! Yay! Welcome! Oh, so good to be here with you ladies. Oh, uh, We're so happy to see you. It's great to see you. Okay, so Christina... We are yes. so excited to have you to talk about this new book, which I know has been just years in the making. I mean, I remember talking about this book with you a couple yeah. of years ago, being so excited for it to come out, and it's finally here. Yeah. So can you begin by telling us about what The Ways We Hide is about? And just in case you thought we would make it easy for you because you're our friend, we all will also tack yeah. on this additional question that requires you to dig deep into your writer's soul. What is the book really about? Okay, so let's see. Let's do, we'll do the the easier one first. <laughs> let's see. So what is the book about? Um, in short, as you well know, because we I remember sitting by a pool down in San Diego before an event, right, and telling yes. me what this whole book was going to be about, and I just started, and oh my goodness, who knew that the world was about to flip upside down? Yeah. So, um, in short, it is about a female illusionist who, in 1942, is the mastermind behind an escape show. And the reason she's so good at escape, as you also know, is because of a childhood trauma she survived in Michigan's copper country. And that is a story that I was stunned ever existed. I thought it's one of those nuggets of history, as you all know, that you come across and you think, how did I not know this before? Like, everybody should know this. So anyway, my story, in my story, my character, Fena, because of her skill set, she has developed because of being obsessed with escape. 
um, because of that trauma. She is recruited by a British military intelligence section called MI9. So you've all heard it, MI5 and 6, right? We've all seen Mission <laughs> Impossible at this point. And MI9 was the what I call the go-go gadget team of World War II. So mm. they invented escape and evade devices that they snuck into almost anything you could possibly think of, which we'll we'll talk about for sure. And um, the actually the real historical figures, one in particular who was the head of the gadget department, he helped inspire the character of Q from James Bond film series. So you see how it all kind of comes together. So my character, it, because of her work with MI9, is pulled much deeper into the war than she ever expects. So there you go. That's kind of the, the nutshell okay. uh, that Steven Spielberg would love to hear from me in an elevator. And <laughs> <laughs> that's going to happen. I'm so ready. We have to um, run into him on tour for sure. Well, you know, it, we were just saying it's eight, 18 flights in like 14 days. I If I don't run into like everybody... <laughs> <laughs> like you should run into like someone at least, really. It'll be a surprise. It'll be a surprise. Some somebody's gonna be a friend of Steven Spielberg. So I think I'll just rattle it off to everyone. <laughs> just to be safe, you know. I think it's good. I think it's good. Um, what is the book really, really about? Deep into my writer's soul. Let's see here. You know, I think it is like like a. I think all my books, in in a nutshell, with writing historical fiction, when you write about tough time periods that people were ordinary people in extraordinary circumstances uh, with World War II, with Great Depression. It's really about then hope, finding hope at the end of a very dark time, which I think parallels to all of our lives, especially the last couple of years for lots of reasons and and also survival. So those are the things that, that I really kind of latched onto and relationships and how those bonds pull you through some of those really hard times too. Yeah, it's That's amazing awesome. how those themes just resonate always and forever you know you're writing a, this historical novel but yet all of those themes still resonate so much today yeah. okay so christina let's dive right in we can't make it this easy on you the whole time <laughs> um, your previous novel sold on a monday was an absolutely enormous bestseller spending 20 weeks on the new york times bestseller list and selling more than 1 million copies so now it's four years later and the ways we hide is your first novel since then so can you talk about the where the idea for this book came from? Um, and I do, I remember talking about this and being like, this is amazing. Um, and whether you felt a lot of pressure to follow up this massive hit. Well, I didn't until now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Now that you it, she's like, aren't you afraid you're going to fail? <laughs> I mean, what we get? <laughs> never. You wrote a beautiful book and that's, you could never fail. Exactly. <laughs> I love you so much. Okay. So um, well, let's see. Well, where the idea came from is that I, I was going through my idea folder and thinking, oh gosh, because you know, because I'm always terrified I'm going to run out of ideas completely. I have no <laughs> idea what I'm going to write next. I obsess over one idea. I am not one of those fancy authors, like I'm sure all of you that I love and hate equally because you have 20 ideas. Thank Thank you, Mary Kay. Thank you. Thank you for making me feel better. Um, that you can't figure out what's right next. No, that is never me. So I think I'm out of ideas forever. And then I went through my idea, my desperation, I should call it my desperation folder. <laughs> and, go, and I flip through and I see this photograph that is about the Italian hall disaster. And ironically, it was the same from the same web page I had found the photo of the children being offered for sale that inspired Sold on a Monday. So it really was one of those terrible, you know, clickbait web links that, that I was grateful for. I found two photos. The second one I'd put in the file folder. It had to do with children. It's a tragedy. It is, and it haunted me. And so I put it in the file folder thinking this is way too sad for a novel, but I couldn't let it go. And I'll just touch on very brief, briefly that the Italian Hall disaster involved a Christmas Eve tragedy that where 73 three people perished in a stampede from a false cry of fire. This is before that was made illegal for very good reasons. Mm -hmm. And vast majority of them were children. And I thought, how did we not hear about this before? Mm -hmm. So that photo was in there. Right next to it was an article that talked about how Monopoly helped win World War II for the Allies. And it was one of those fun fact articles that, that where they used the, the Monopoly boards, which I have, by the way. Hi, show and tell. 
Look at that. Yeah, oh, I love it. Oh. The UK Monopoly board, so you can see how it has the British pounds on it and um, and the different avenues that are different that are so cool. Um, they took this board and they look how thin it is. And it was even thinner during World War II because of resources, you know, and rationing. And they cut into the board and put two files, a compass and a silk map inside and would sneak those, you know, into POW camps to try to help the allies escape. Wow. It's such a cool fun fact. You're like, how, we all grew up with Monopoly. How did we not hear about this before? It was kept classified until the mid 80s because it was so successful, they thought they might have to use it against the Russians during the Cold War. And so only then was it declassified. And so there's this cool article and I thought it's a fun fact that's so neat, but how does that make a whole novel? And suddenly, like the movie Working Girl, remember? I just thought <laughs> the other day and I loved it. It really was, you know, remember in Lincoln Working Girl, if you've all seen that, it was like Trask Radio, Trask Radio, you know, and suddenly you have an idea together. And I realized that if my character survived the stampede, because there were, there were a small number of people that survived, she would become obsessed with escape. She would need two ways out, out of every room at all times. She would become obsessed with Houdini. And because of this, MI9 turns out they recruited and helped, you know, worked with illusionists and magicians because that skill set was so perfectly fitting for this group. So that's how I knew I suddenly had my story. And about within 15 minutes, I had about two thirds of the novel in my head. Oh my God. That, that is amazing. 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 How about the pressure to follow up such a big hit? I mean, I know, I know, I know. We, 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 we've now just Christine put the, just the wanted to you. bring that up again. Just turn just, in the screws, Christina. Just, just turn in the screws. I so thought I slipped out of that one. You notice how I dressed that and came back to the story? Nope. Nope. You, your your character may be an escape artist, but you are not. <laughs> <laughs> So we're just going to spend the whole hour on this, aren't we? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I, I think I'm just curious because I think, you know, it was such a huge hit. And I know, um, I know each time I've taken a step forward in my career, um, I feel it, instead of giving me confidence, it gives me fear. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, what if I can't repeat what I've done? Sort of. Well, that, and that when like feeling. nine people are reading your book, like it doesn't really matter if it's good or not. <laughs> <laughs> when it's only family and friends that feel obligated to buy a copy, you're like, I, I can make more friends. I'll just make more friends. <laughs> yeah. So no, honestly, seriously, um, I think that I think it could be very, very daunting if I let it bother me, if I thought about it. But I just choose not to. I think it it felt like that was incredible and amazing. And it's still so surreal that to sell a million copies is hard to wrap my mind around. Um as you all know, a month before the book came out, I suddenly had like anxiety, physical anxiety, thinking this book is going to fail. So the fact that it sold more than a dozen copies, it's like really <laughs> um, But I think because of that, I just figured, you know what, there's so much, as we just definitely have been seeing in our, all of our lives, um, especially the last few years, there's so much we can't control, um, yep. good and bad. And, and I figure why worry about the things that I can't control? What I can do is do what I did with Sold on a Monday and every book before that, which is write the best book I possibly can, put it out into the world, do some fun promotion that I enjoy, like doing, like doing this show that is just a treat and go and meet people and talk about history, nuggets of history that everybody should know about, you know, and, and I get to tell stories that, that otherwise might be forgotten um, by at least a number of people that I talk to or, and maybe never even learned about. Yep. And that's such an honor. And when I focus on that instead, the rest of it doesn't seem important. That is a awesome. perfect answer. Excellent. Okay. All right. That's so, what we were wanting you to say. Fact, you know, we had to <laughs> hand it to you on a silver platter, Christina. But thanks. Thanks for getting there. No, I'm just kidding. That, that, that is, it, it's a great answer. Um, so, Christina, we are usually the ones who pull off surprises for our guests, like our dress-up games with Karen Slaughter or, um, or surprising Sally Hepworth when it, with an appearance by Emily Giffen. But oh, tonight, God. much like your heroine Fena might do, you have turned the tables. You've brought a surprise for us. Okay. Shall we momentarily, with a little bit of hesitation, hand the reins over to you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you should. <laughs> um, yeah, so I sent these all out. Uh, Meg knows about a little of it. She had a little tiny bit of input that you'll find out soon. <laughs> <laughs> Up secret. 
it's always good to put top secret on the outside of the package too, because you know that doesn't advertise to anyone that, that it's top secret. <laughs> I think I'm a really bad spy. I think if you are really, it's really classified, you don't write classified on the outside and put it. I'm in surprised your a porch pirate didn't take my. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So yeah, maybe I should put like hazardous, dangerous. Do <laughs> I have to tell you, like this was really hard for me. Like it came in, I texted Christina and I was like, this is just awful. Like, why would you do this to us? Do to be open to on air. And I mean, she said it like two weeks ago. Like, it's not well, like we got it yesterday. I mean, and you remember what I told you in my text? She, she told me if it whimpered, not to worry. <laughs> no, the pressure for me was, will I find it the night of the show? Or yes, will exactly. Will it stash it somewhere and forget where I stashed it? Right. Oh my gosh, right. you're a worse spy than I am if you forget where you put the top secret stash. <laughs> Now, I'd be a terrible spy, just so you know. So let us open it already. <laughs> okay, okay, calm down. <laughs> okay, open your packages. Okay, so I figured, well, I wouldn't know what a good spy you'll be at this point. <laughs> so it seems that you are all spies that need help. So you're going to help bring you in better spies. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Ooh. First, you have to show. Oh, you are all from different things. Okay, show the little <laughs> bag. Let's, let's coordinate. Okay, so first you oh, get your you oh, get a tag okay. name that has your name and your code name on there. Oh my gosh, you're amazing. <laughs> Mine's so, Vuv. That's the best. Vuv, I love it. <laughs> awesome. So, okay, so put those on. Kristen's obviously Mystica. Mystica, like, obviously. Mystica, no obviously. one will ever guess. Patty. Yeah. And so when when Patty's oh, on the Patty. first two. I'm Wheezy. Oh, that's Wheezy. I love it. I see we have a little okay. notebook. To now you need your secret messages. So open up your little notepad onto the first page. And then you've got a little black light on the end of your invisible pin marker. And then turn on the light. <laughs> and then you can show them what they say. Oh, my gosh. She wrote us secret messages. I don't know if you can yeah. see. Okay. Let's Mine see. Oh, says. Oh, you can. Mine says, hi, Mystica. Much love, Christina. <laughs> it's off door. This is really, this it's is really so intense. Right? I love this. Oh, my it's gosh. Very top secret. Okay. All right. Hi. And then what else do you have? You got something else in there? My mind says, hi, Daisy. Much love, Christina. Aww. Thank you. It's a very top secret message. Okay. Then you got your glasses. You can wear oh, throughout yes. the summer or at night because that's not suspicious at all. And the reason why you wear these is because you can see behind you. Oh my gosh. Oh my God, you can. Okay, Christina, good for being a spy yes. and a mom. <laughs> <laughs> this is when you go, I'm, I can see what you're doing. I can see what you're doing behind me. <laughs> I have eyes in the back of my head. Oh my, oh my God. gosh. If only I'd had these when my kids were teenagers. <laughs> it's so okay, and then of course, all spies need, also need to eat. So, oh, nice. so these are the Dutch cookies that I love. Oh my goodness. So they look like windmills. Oh, I'm really hungry. And they're yummy. And in the back of my novel actually are Dutch recipes and that kind of thing. So this made me think of that. And so there you go. Awesome. Christina, thank you. This How much fun. Too fun. And my favorite is the top secret pad that you have to put the special light yeah. on. Oh that my god! So fun. That is so fun. I, I cannot I wait. Like I'm gonna put that in Will's lunchbox tomorrow with a note that he has. Oh, to take I love it. I love those. And it doesn't matter how old you are. You get an invisible pin, and I realize it's like Disneyland. Like it doesn't matter <laughs> how how sophisticated you think you are. You walk into Disneyland, or for me, or you get that invisible pin. You are five year old. <laughs> I'm sitting here right. riding. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, or. Anyway. You get cookies and you have to eat them on air. You're five years old. I don't know what to say. It's so good, right? I, I couldn't good. help myself. <laughs> Christina, well, thank I'm you. Now I'm going to not eat these cookies. All right. <laughs> so I know I, tomorrow I'm giving this to my 11-year-old um, grandson, and, and maybe he'll think I'm cool. Probably not. Okay. <laughs> now, the scenes of Senna, your protagonist in action, are so realistic. Would you talk us through the research you did to get both the magic 
and the tricky things she created for the allies just right? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, goodness. So with Fena, it was a lot of reading, of course, stop watching documentaries. And when it comes to illusion and magic, so there are two kind of different things. She is an illusionist. She's an escapologist. So there's that part of her life. And then there's MI9 with the gadgetry and all of that. So there, there was so much research in this book. It was crazy. Um, so I will show you a few of the cool gadgets as well. And then I'll talk about the magic too. So here are some real things from like that they used with MI9 and World War II. So here is a silk map from World War II. That's that is so cool. fun. Um, the reason why, of course, it's printed on silk was ingenious. It's super thin, so that's why they could fit into a lot of things. You could sew it into tunics of the airmen's uniforms if in case they were downed in occupied territory. Um, really importantly, you know, when you um, crinkle it, it doesn't rustle. So if you are hiding in the forest, well, not like forest of vanishing stars, if you have, <laughs> then um, it does it helps not give you away and it withstands the weather, whether it's rain or dropped in a puddle, et cetera. So super, super cool. And that was put in the Monopoly boards. Um, there were things that a magician named Jasper Mescaline actually created this for MI9 and MI5 and 6. Um, this is just regular playing cards. So this is a replica. I, I won't brag to have the real thing. The only deck that supposedly still exists that's known is in the National Spy Museum in Washington, D.C. So you take this, you magic a video, we soak it for two minutes. And look what happens. Here's the card. And it splits apart. And now you have a map that's that you lay out with 52 cards that's now doubled. And you have a, a map of the whole area, which is super cool. OK. Here's an, I'll show you one more. Okay, so I'm such a, oh my God, I'm such a World War II geek with all this stuff. Um, so great. This is so nice. fun. So here is typical pocket watch they use for an airman. And you take out the crown. And so I'll pull that out and you turn it over and, and I'll use my nail to open it. Now, here's what's so cool. Okay, so the watch is now opened. It's not a working watch. Instead, this is from World War II, this is so cool. This is a compass awesome. that floats. And now you can help try to find your way to a safe zone. So this stuff is so fun. So as far as um, her MI9 studies, that a lot of it came from that. And I also worked with an MI9 historian that wrote a whole book called MI9. So that was really helpful. And then as far as the magic goes, I read a lot of Houdini books and his magic tricks that he put on that he revealed and also had two or three professional magicians that read through all those sections in the book to make sure that that I got them correct. Because I even created a couple of my own tricks. <laughs> so, and I went, I think this is plausible. I think this escape could work, you know, and they read it and said, yeah, that could work. I'm like, oh, God. So That's if incredible. this whole writing gig doesn't work out, you know, I am so going on the road. <laughs> That'd be great. Can I be your assistant? Only if you bring that martini. Yeah, totally. You can totally come. <laughs> okay. All I right. Have multiple skills. Magician's assistant, <laughs> martini maker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's just a good, a good girl to have on the road. Just I don't know. do it before the show, please. <laughs> I, yeah. If I, if I had to slide of hand, it would be really tragic. <laughs> <laughs> so uncoordinated. I can't even open a packet of Splenda. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's not per it's not personal, but you cannot be my assistant. <laughs> yeah, I cannot be your assistant. But here is one thing um, that I'm interested in, uh, and it's totally kind of off the subject, but that idea file. Yeah. What else is in there? Oh, oh, do you want to pay me for it? <laughs> no. Huh, what's it worth? To you? What's it worth to you, Mary Kay? Hmm? <laughs> I think, you know what? I, that's a great thing about writers because we all, I think we all have different strokes for different folks. The idea that you have, I'm like, oh my God, that's amazing. But how would I write that? Mm -hmm. And the idea that I might had, have I, if I had an idea file, you might say that's, that's absurd. I don't know. Mm -mm. <laughs> 
<laughs> Actually, most of the things that I see that I think that would be a really good book, but I have no idea how I would write that. I like send to one of you. I send you a lot of those, Mary Kay. Like it'll be some like great, like twisty or like unsolved mystery. And I'm like, or like just some random report. And I'm like, that is clearly not what actually happened. And I send it to her. I'm like, this should be a book. Can you, this did not happen. So what did happen? <laughs> I like that. I like that. You know, Christina, one of the things I thought when I was reading this book is is about the idea, at least for me, I always find myself sort of inadvertently, um, oh my God, I just have to read this comment from Kathy Baker. Christy can make the martini disappear. That's her <laughs> That's her magic power. That's what it says. <laughs> you, have, you, you totally understand my level of magic prowess. Thank you. I feel really seen right now. What do you see her with a, what do you see her with a bottle of love? That's, <laughs> that's, that's my real trick. <laughs> Yes. That is better awesome. than that. No, she, she can make two martinis disappear. <laughs> <laughs> and then she dematerializes. <laughs> she, she becomes invisible in her own mind. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. The is it would only take two. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and Robin Shelley is saying, MKA, you'd be a great spy. If you're so uncoordinated, no one would suspect you. It's a solid point, Robin right. Shelley. Yeah. Like, there was no way anybody would trust her with any secrets. They would never No, She's just an idiot wandering around. <laughs> All right. So, so Christina, what I was, uh, what I was wondering is, you know, I was thinking when I, um, when I'm working on a book, I often find myself exploring something that I, that I, that I need to explore or that kind of becomes a piece of me, if, if that makes sense. Like, I, you know, I think we sometimes inadvertently find ourselves writing things um, we need to dig into in our personal lives. Did writing about Fena finding her strength change you or influence your life at all? I mean, you've spent so much time with her over the last couple of years. Right. Um, it's a good question. I, you know, I don't know how to separate that out really um, of how much I guess I influenced her or she influenced me. This sounds, this sounds like I need therapy for sure. <laughs> Christy can provide that too after she drinks the martinis. She's, I'm yeah. here for all of your needs. It's, I'm, it's good. Really right. Good. My imaginary friend insisted I do that. <laughs> um, but no, I will say that I think that there is a parallel for sure. I don't know how we separate it completely, right? I mean, yeah. our characters all have a little piece of us in them. And and I think for the last, for the two years I was writing the book, there were, as, as you ladies know, there were a lot of things I was going through behind the scenes. So um, that I'm really happy to be on the other side of at the moment, knock on wood. Um, so there was, you know, major family transitions. There was a health scare that lasted five months that ended with a surgery that that everything went great, thankfully. And there were, you know, helping my helping my oldest get into college, teaching two kids how to drive simultaneously. I don't wish that on anyone. <laughs> <laughs> if that doesn't make you stronger, I don't know what yeah. does. <laughs> I mean, World War II may have been tough, but you you teach two boys how to drive. <laughs> Just saying. Um, so yeah, you know, I think that going through again hardships and 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 learning from them and realizing that you know that you have to just keep getting up in the morning and 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 doing what you need to do. I think that that um, that I'm sure that came through with my character, yeah. even even subconsciously. That makes sense. I think so too. Um, well, we know that you'll be back in October. We can't wait. We're already so excited um, to talk about the World War II novel you collaborated on with Ariel Lawton and um, Susan Meissner, who we love. And we love both of them. I, that sounded like, I meant we love Susan, I meant <laughs> who we love as in both of them. Collectively. Um, we won't go too deep into that book now since you'll be telling us about it next month. But can you give us like a quick elevator pitch for When We Had Wings and then we'll tell us that first, and then I have something else. Okay, sounds good. Um, yeah, and rem I, and a little reminder. I think I told Kristen the other day. I brought cards with me, by the way, ladies. Um, just just in case you wanted me to pull out a magic trick that I haven't yeah. done. Before. <laughs> so, Obviously. Okay, we'll 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 do that. Okay. 
I haven't attempted it since high school either. So this should be super, super oh, fun. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? I don't <laughs> Nothing could go wrong on life. Nothing could go wrong on life. Jen thinks it's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here is about, uh, let's see, a little bit about the other book. Yes. So When We Had Wings. Oh, I'm super proud of this book for very different reasons. This one also wrote during that same time period and wrote with two good friends. So the fact that HarperCollins asked the three of us to work together, you know, just like you guys doing this show, you want us to work together and play together. That sounds good. That sounds like a good day at work. Yeah. Um, and we got to choose what we wanted to write about. And we chose a, uh, to write a story about the women that were called the Angels of Baton. I had never heard about that before until Susan came across a documentary they were the nurses who served in Manila and the Philippines during World War II. So the three of them, a U.S. Army, U.S. Navy, and a Filipina nurse, all become very close friends right before the Japanese Imperial Forces attacked and invaded the Philippines and completely, of course, upend their lives among other peoples. What these women went through is remarkable. The fact we hadn't really heard of them is crazy. So they not only, of course, survived themselves, all of them, there are about 80 of them. Somehow they all survived the Japanese occupation, which they were some of the first female POWs of World War II. Wow. And they went through every jungle, tropical disease you can think of, you know, some malaria, beriberi, all of that, Hoover, and kept everybody else alive around them to the best of their abilities with no resources at the time. For three years they went through this. So because of that, it's called When We Had Wings, and we are very excited to share it with you. Can't wait. That sounds incredible. So um, about that. And sounds so just daunting to me. I just, I can't wrap my mind around how you do that. So what is it like to work so closely? I mean, I know you're really good friends with, you know, both of these other authors. What was it like to work so closely with two other authors when you're accustomed to writing alone? Yeah, well, this is one of those things where you go, well, we used to be friends. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Right. It's like those friends. You, I mean, you, no, I'm so kidding. I love them even more now, which tells you how we weren't together. Um, and, you know, it's we joke about writing together is probably like, you know, it's like friends you travel with. You know, you may love someone, but you can't always travel with everybody. <laughs> you kind of yes. like them more before the trip. Yes. <laughs> In, in this case, you kind of find out, you know, how you work with other people writing, not just an anthology I'd done before where we kind of interwove some characters in Grand Central, but it wasn't a novel that is that has so much more to it, as you guys know. So to have our characters come together and split apart and uh, throughout the story and be outlining and writing in different at different times. So each one of us wrote our section at a different time, whenever wow. our schedule was up. So cool. it really was kind of here's our outline. And then not all of it got followed because you, as you're writing, you realize it changes. So imagine mm -hmm. when you, when you, I'm the third person, when I got it, I thought, okay, how do I write my story around those and hopefully make it all cohesive? Wow. And how do I have a cliffhanger that is not answered by my character for an eight month gap? And wow. So, you go, so it was a challenge. And when I figured out the solutions, I was so excited. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this could work. So it was a new new skill set that was really good. And and we had fun and we still love each other. And we're going to tour together, too, which is fun. That's oh, awesome. That's the best reason to do it. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Oh, no. keeps asking us to write a novel with her. And we just pressure, pressure, pressure from Mary Kay. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Uh, all right, Christina, we would love to see that magic trick if you were up for showing it to us. Oh, oh, I would love to because, <laughs> you know, this, if you guys are suspenseful, it doesn't beat my suspense to see if this is going to work. <laughs> what other show would I do this on? Only with you guys. Only with you guys. <laughs> it's only the four of us and nobody else is watching. This no, it's just no, us here. No one. So Don't worry about it. Not okay, so here are the cards. Yeah, it's a real card deck. And actually, I pulled this out because do you see these? It's a commemorative map uh, map deck from oh, wow. that that celebrates that they used to put maps inside the cards. Well, that's it's good awesome. to know because I was like, uh, something's a little <laughs> off about those cards. <laughs> okay, here we go. See, isn't that cool? There's like a yeah, map cool. behind all of them, so it's pretty neat. Okay, all right, magical. Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay, you, you're gonna. Okay, you're gonna pick a card. Tell me when to stop. 
Stop. Stop. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm glad you guys are all timed well. Okay. I'm not looking. Well. I'm really seriously not looking. Okay. Here you go. You see it? Yeah. Okay. You can. Okay. I can't tell where the camera is. So <laughs> you're going to have to help me. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. Here we go. So let me get the, the deck back together. Okay. Here we go. I'm putting it here. I did not see it. Do you see that? I did not. Okay. okay. All right. Here we go. Now I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to shuffle. Look at this. <laughs> Do you see this? You see this? Like shuffle? Shuffling. <laughs> okay. It's really what? expert looking shuffling. You know what? Thanks. I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that part. In the okay. show. Oh my God. Are you ready? Okay. All right. Focus on your card. Cause I can't do this unless you send it to me telepathically. Okay. Here we go. I'm, okay, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. Okay. No. Hold on. Okay. It's, I'm, I'm full of suspense. right now. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Is that it? Yes! yes! <laughs> I love it. And that was a Friends in Fiction first. We've never had cards. Never, never had cards. We've never had cards. We've Friends in Fiction before. When I go on the road, I'm going to have to tame my excitement a little bit at the end. Like, I'm going to act not surprised that it worked. <laughs> <laughs> well, give a you have to be like obviously this is what i meant to do to be like yes i knew i knew what your card was the whole time <laughs> mm -hmm. well I'll, I'll help you we'll work on that in the um i mean i assume we'll have some kind of like cool trailer or something that we get to pull around with us oh so yeah we'll yeah and the mini bar and the mini bar <laughs> oh my yeah, god you can't about that like <laughs> Very true. All right, Christina, we love to ask our guests for a writing tip. If you'd like to sub in a magic tip, we're open to that also, but we will sure. accept a writing tip if that's where you are. Okay. Well, magic tip is, um, <laughs> is don't act super surprised when it works. <laughs> <laughs> Solid tip. <laughs> uh, for writing tip. Oh goodness. I would say um, my writing tip biggest thing is because it's such a job at home, as you all know. There is there are a million other distractions that could pull you away, and especially when the writing is hard, that everything else looks more fun. So having that schedule, that discipline of sitting down and treating it like a real job, even if you are not on deadline, um, and right, you write a page a day, and hypothetically, <laughs> in a year, you have a book. So that's, that's one of the ones and to write, you know, one of the big ones too, I would say that I was thinking about recently when somebody asked, you know, how, so what was the first book like? How did you get an agent? And it, as if it seems so simple. And I said, um, a, a stack of 50 rejections. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, and a lot of them being toward the end, anyway, the less, the second half of those was world war two fiction will never sell unless it is espionage. <laughs> or you know, thriller, no market for it. And I'm like, well, that would have been helpful 350 pages ago. <laughs> so, um, I'm, I'm glad I didn't know. I'm glad I was blissfully yeah. ignorant of the market. Or I might have said, eh, you know, why put on all this time for a book that will never sell? And really, I thought, if it, if it doesn't sell, I'll make copies at Kinko's. I'll give it to the kids and grandkids. I'll spiral yeah. bind it. It'll be so fancy. Um, and I'm really glad I didn't know. And the thing is, I think that advice still holds up, which is don't try to write toward a trend. If you're a writer, yeah. write what you love, write what you're passionate about, ignore the rest. And I think there's, I think there's an element of just being aware, but I think that if something is just tugging at you, you should write it and you should write what you want to read. Absolutely. It's, it's also a really good reminder of um, how quickly the market can change. You know what I mean? Just the fact that um, that you would get that kind of feedback uh, about World War II. I mean, who's who is reading World War II books? Who would be crazy yeah. enough to write that? I don't know. I mean, it's basically a failed genre, if you ask me. <laughs> I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. For sure. And, actually, and I will say that, you know, we were talking just the other day about like, what are my last favorite reads and all this. And, and that's think, my next question. Ooh, okay. Yeah. okay. Um, what have you read lately that you're loving? What were you saying, Christy? Oh, okay. Good question. Good question. <laughs> um, this is honest. You can yeah. still read my mind even after the card trick. 
<laughs> it's like crazy. Okay, I thought maybe I could make it stick. Okay, there you go. Okay. Um, <laughs> I can. Um, I'm super superhuman. So, okay, the last <laughs> book I read that I and this is I'm not even lying about this. Um, that I read and loved that is still on my nightstand is The Wedding Veil. Aww. Thank you. You wrote me the most beautiful blurb that I shared everywhere obnoxiously all over. <laughs> and we'll continue to do so. <laughs> I, I, love and I love all your books. And it's, you know, it, it was, we, it, you, I know you guys feel the same as far as you hope, you know, you want to love all your friends' books. And, and it's like your children, you love them at different levels. <laughs> right? Right? You love them all. But, but it was, oh my gosh, isn't it the coolest thing ever when you read a friend's book and as I feel about all of you and you read it and you just go, oh my God, and you forget that they're your friends because oh as yeah. you're reading it, because you're enjoying it so much, you have to like remind yourself that you actually know the yeah. author <laughs> and you're, you're just pulled into another world. And I just love that. So yes, I love all of you. I love your books. And, and yeah, that was my last favorite read. Thank that you. Is awesome. What a, what a perfect answer. Sean, can you All right. clip out, please? <laughs> <laughs> and, and by the way, Christy, thanks for the check. I, I really appreciate it. I <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll earn it back when we're on the road. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, Christina, if you would not mind sticking around for a few more minutes, we have one more question for you. But first, a few reminders from us. Now, just a quick reminder about our Writer's Block podcast. We always post links under announcements each time a new one drops. A new episode launches each Friday. On the most recent episode, Ron and Patty talked to chef, TV host, and founder of Callie's Hot Little Biscuit, Carrie Morris. Carrie Morey about her cookbook, Hot Little Suppers. And this week, Ron and Christy will talk to Brenda Novak about her latest novel, Summer on the Island, which was released earlier this year. That was a great conversation. And don't forget to join us over on the Fable app where we read one book per month, and it's always a book we featured on the show. So if you want to dig a little deeper and engage in a discussion with us and with the other Friends of Fiction Club members, make sure to download the Fable app and search for Friends and Fiction Behind the Book Club. Fable is offering a free 14-day trial right now, so you can join us as we chat about Tamron Hall's As the Wicked Watch, and you can learn more at fable.co backslash friends and fiction. And make sure also, since we're giving you a list of things to do, <laughs> to connect online with our very own Friends and Fiction official book club with Brenda and Lisa, which is now more than 14,000 strong. This month, they're reading The Lost Book of Eleanor Dare by Kimberly Brock. They'll be discussing it live with Kimberly on September 19th at 7 p.m. Eastern. We also want to remind you that now that we're in September, we have a brand new reading challenge for you. Our friend Anissa Armstrong is leading the way. And this month, we're encouraging you to read a book that's a retelling of a myth or a classic. There's a lot of chatter on our Facebook page about the books our members are deciding to read and which ones we're deciding to read. So you can hop over there to look for some great suggestions. Oh, we have a lot of announcements tonight. We have a lot going on. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of great suggestions for books, Mary Kay mentioned earlier in the show that all four of us, um, Patty, who's not here, well, and Christina, um, have books coming out in 2023. So we've decided that we will be doing at least four Friends and Fiction live events, one during each of our book tours. So stay tuned for news about these four events so you can mark your calendars and make your travel plans to join us as we take our show on the road in April, May, June, and again in the fall. We had a great time touring this year, and um, Meg and her husband even designed us an awesome tour poster, which we all autographed when we were in New Jersey for an event. Um, and if you missed picking up one of these posters live, you can grab one now from our friends at Independent bookstore Oxford Exchange in Tampa. They also have all of our other Friends in Fiction swag like t-shirts and insulated mugs and our awesome reading journals. So go check it out at OxfordExchange.com. All right, Christina, we always like to ask our author guests what the values around reading and writing were when they were growing up. But I think you've answered that question before with us. So I would love to ask you this instead. What kind of values did you create around reading and writing for your own boys who are teenagers now? And what advice do you have for parents and grandparents out there who want to instill a love of reading early? 
Oh, I love that. So Tristan, my oldest, who is the one who's just off at college now um, and doing nothing but studying and talking to no one and making no friends. No, um, he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's doing so great. Oh, it, that makes it easier. Makes it easier on the mom heart, right? When, when, uh, when you know they're doing well. So I will say that amazing journey from here now, tracing back to when he struggled with reading and writing. And it was because the writing he um, was terrified of, of it not being perfect. So it was kind of getting over that, imp that fear of, of, uh, of making mistakes. And also when it came to the reading, which went hand in hand with reading he, it, the sight words, do you guys remember those, the, the yeah. flash words, please, the hundred flashcards every night for a summer. And yeah. half of them, it was like, he never saw them before. I mean, it was just over and over and we were both in tears some nights over it. And oh. one day it finally clicked. But I will say this, as far as what led then to the love of reading was as he struggled through that and started starting to enjoy reading or at least getting it, I should say not enjoy. I had heard that the, the book Holes that I hadn't read yet at the time oh, yeah. was fantastic. So he started to read Holes. And I said, tell you what, if you read this book, I know it's a movie. And if you finish it, we will make a family movie night. We'll have hot cocoa and and we'll wear ugly socks because that's our thing. I don't know why. And make popcorn <laughs> and we will watch it. And you will tell us what's different than the book. And oh, give us this, like a direct yes. commentary. And he got very excited about this idea. So that is one of the ones I passed along to friends. And he said, okay, he goes, that sounds fun. So he started to read it. And I remember he came to me and said, I have no idea how this is happening, mom. I'm reading the words. And I can see it in my head. He was <gasps> floored. He said, I didn't know that was possible. Oh my and gosh. It's like, it's like magic. And I'm like, it is like magic. So, <laughs> so from there, we did The Lightning Thief. And, you know, we just kind of went from book to book that turned into movies. And that became our thing. And <sighs> it was such a nice goal at the end to set for them. And, and now he reads more than all of us combined. So. Oh, I love that. That's Wonderful. such a great story, Christina. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, All right, before we before we let you go for the evening, where can our viewers find you online and on the road for your, for the next couple of weeks of your book tour? <laughs> on the where, road, where, 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 where can't we find you? Actually, <laughs> yeah. no. So um, my, <laughs> right, my website kind of has everything. So and it even has the gadgets like videos on there that demonstrate more of them that I own of, oh, of how to work. So super fun and all of my events. So it is a lot of events in September and October and it's 15 States and I can't wait to see everybody. So that'll be fun. So uh, website and then also on social media. So Facebook and Instagram, I'm on the most and I've posted some things there that are fun and also tour events. So I hope they find you. That is Yay. awesome. Well, Christina, thank you so much for spending time with us tonight. It was such a pleasure hanging out with you. Um, and this was such a one of a kind show. I mean, just to see all the cool things you have to, to get our, to receive our eyes in the back of our heads, spy glasses, our cookies, all of it. It was just, but most of all, Christina, just a pleasure to hang out with you, to hear about your book. And I'm so excited for our viewers out there to uh, to get to pick up your own copy too. We love you. I'm going to have right. one more cookie you all are credit to. <laughs> I'm like, what is that sound? Oh, it's without cookies. <laughs> that would be loudest. such a bad spy. Oh my gosh. That was the loudest cookie accessing in the history of man. Wow. <laughs> Like it doesn't even matter. The silk map totally wasted on Christy because you give her cookies and everybody knows where she is. Well, you, well, don't give me cookies. I mean, this is not my fault. <laughs> All right, Christina, thank you so thank much. You. Have a great time on tour and congratulations on this you. great book. Oh, thank you. Mwah. See you guys soon. Bye. Bye. All right, everyone out there, you can find all of our back episodes on YouTube. We're live there every week, just like we are on Facebook. And if you subscribe, you won't miss a thing. Be sure to come back right here next week when we welcome Sarah Addison Allen and Laura K. Denton. And stick around for our after show because Patty's coming back. Patty's going to be with us for a couple minutes. So we'll see you after the credits. Thank you for tuning in. You can join us every week on Facebook or YouTube, where our live show airs on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. 
Also, subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Instagram. We're so glad you're here. Yay! Hey, Patty! Hey, guys! I miss you so much. We miss you tonight, too. Tell us about what you've been doing. You're off in, you're in New Orleans, on the streets of New Orleans. Yeah, I mean, you know how cool I am. I'm walking well, around the streets of New Orleans wearing a name tag. That's is how it as cool, cool I am. Is it as cool as this na- name tag that says secret agent? Because there's no. one of you. Yeah. So, no, sorry. it just says yeah. Patty <laughs> Callahan Henry, the secret. Well, it is because it says the secret book of Flora Lee on it. Oh, Y'all, awesome. I know that we started this for indie booksellers and I know how important they are to us. But sometimes I can sort of forget until you meet with an entire room full of them and how they made it through COVID, how they survived, how they've banded together, what Bink has done for them, Uh, you know, for booksellers who, you know, had problems or got sick. It's such an incredible group of bookstore owners and they're like a tribe and they love all of you and they asked about all of you and they all know about the show and they're all like, who's on the show next? And when can all four of you come visit? And Aww. yeah, so I missed y'all a lot. We're a little but package, I missed it. Right? <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> oh, you we are? missed you too. Where are you going to go? We're like a little package. <laughs> Daddy, where are you going to dinner? I don't know. I'm kind of looking around to try and decide. I don't know. The first thing I passed that looks good and not the candy shop because that's what I just passed. So <laughs> somewhere that has like some gumbo maybe. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Sean is suggesting that are good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So where does oh, everybody here, maybe I'll have this for dinner. What is it? Gelato. <laughs> well, I'm eating cookies that Christina sent us, so... I get it. Well, I can't wait to get home and find my secret agent. I bet it was so great tonight. Was it so great? It was so, so much fun. So much fun. One thing is, what kind of real secret agent actually wears a secret agent name badge that says, I'm a secret agent? <laughs> oh, here's I my, it. And here's it those people off. What I, name I did you all get? What name did you get on your secret agent thing? Mine says Mystica. Oh. <gasps> Vov. What does yours say, Christy? Vov. Vov. Wheezy. Wheezy. <laughs> hey, you know, should um, I get this jacket? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Or really this good. dress. I have a drop cloth that looks like that. Oh my like God. the dress? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, I think with these badges, um, it's like the double misdirect, Kathy. I mean, it says secret oh, agent, so nobody it, would really think you're a secret agent because what secret agent would be dumb enough to wear a badge that that's says exactly right. it's like the, so, it's like the exactly right. There are a lot of reasons ever. that I could not be a secret agent. Um, <laughs> one of them was going on while we were on the show. I was frantically text, like typing to them. I can't hear. Like, you're going to have to take my next question because the dog came in the room. And we've had some trauma with the dog eating some things he wasn't supposed to eat this week. He comes in the room. There's a magazine on the floor that is wrapped in plastic. He proceeds to get the plastic off and in his mouth. So I text Will, who's downstairs. I'm like, you've got to come up and get the dog, get this thing out of his mouth. So Will comes running up and he has his AirPods in. And I can't figure out how to get them off. So secret agent is not going to go well. (laughs) Oh, my God. At least you got it out of his mouth before he ate it because I'm very concerned about salt. I'm going to get hit by a car. I'm very concerned about salt. I know. Poor he's, salt. He's doing well now, but he's a rascal. Hey, Patty, Patty, the, like my, my uh, Heidi neighbor has a praline shop called Southern Candy Makers in the French Quarter. And I, I can tell you from experience how good those are. So I'm just okay, saying. Okay, I'm going to go find them. And Patty, we, and Patty, we have a Facebook comment from um, a viewer named Julie saying um, there's a place called the Gumbo Shop in the Quarter. J- okay. It's, it's uh, Julie Bodie. She says to eat at the Gumbo Shop in the Quarter. Okay, I'm going to hang up on y'all and put it in my maps and go find it. 
All right. I miss y'all so much. Thank we you miss you so too. Bye. Bye. All right, ladies. That was such a fun night. We got magic. We got little gifts. We got awesome World War II props. Uh, and, you know, we get to see Patty at the end of it all. And, and we get to spend some so much time with our wonderful friend, Christina. So good night, I think. Yeah. And I, I just want, I mean, the thing that I want to ask you all is, could you do 14 days out of, of a book tour in a carry-on bag? No, no. I, I can't do two nights in a carry-on. Like it's like a struggle. It's like a stroke. I'm like, <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna be able to take those shoes. I don't know. I'll just check a bag. I'll just check a bag. I mean, I think, <laughs> no way. No way. No, she came to Beaufort one time. I guess it was on tour and she had this little carry on. I was like, what is that? She was like, oh no, I'm the tour in this. I was like, that is, I don't, yeah. I don't have words for that. I don't have vocabulary for that. Yeah, well, Christy know. has to travel by car with a clothes rack in the back of her. <laughs> well, I mean, that's with just all of her thing. outfits, but her, I mean, the organization of your outfits is, you know, that's goal for me, baby. That's goal. There's a special. I love, I, I love that for you, it's a clothing rack because you guys have seen me, I think, roll up in a car that just had like bins of stuff in the back. Like, here's my bin that has tomorrow's pants. Like, that's but, yeah, but I think that, okay, but I actually am really intrigued by that system too. You and Patty both do that. Like, you have like a bin of like, you know, your toiletries and then like yeah. your underwear and then like your pants or like your dresses. And so it's like when you go into like the one hotel, you're just, you're grabbing and putting everything in a bag and going in, which is, uh, I'm very intrigued by that system also. One day we'll all meld together and we'll have mm -hmm. like the perfect packing system, but really it needs to be coordinated by Christina McMorris. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, mm -hmm. I can't. Okay. We need to talk about uh, pre-orders Yes. So I don't know if you guys have heard. Yeah. But, but. Um, Barnes and Noble does this really cool pre-order thing um, where for like two days a year you can pre or it's it's probably every quarter or something. But I think all of our books would be available right now. You can yeah. pre-order any book and get 25 percent off with the code. <laughs> Secret code. But you can't I read it. it. Oh no. Well, you're not gonna be able to see it. Pre-order 25, but I did write it. Um, so yeah, pre-order 25, pre-order 25. If you have um, a burning desire to pre-order something, which we imagine that you do. <laughs> if I have a, um, a, uh, a book bub deal on the home record. So you all can, um, download the ebook of home records now through sunday for 6.99 yeah. so um, would encourage everybody if you haven't and, and we're going to post it um to all my socials tomorrow and um you know here's the thing um we haven't talked about much but what really if you want to help us and who wouldn't um, <laughs> <laughs> all of us and our authors that we've had on the show What's really helpful to all of us for our careers, if you will post a review, an wow. online review, mm -hmm. um, wherever you like to do that. So if you like to post them on Goodreads or BNN.com or uh, Amazon, whatever, but um, that helps the, um, what's that math word that I can't think of? Algorithm. Yeah, that word, algorithm. You know, I don't do math. Time <laughs> <laughs> in terms of our finances. Like algorithm, because I she knows I can't do math. But it really helps for any author whose work you love. If you will post a, a if I mean, hopefully, a positive review. If you're a hater, <laughs> stay home. <laughs> Uh, all right. On that note. <laughs> all right, ladies, that was a great evening. I've got to go put Noah to bed. I'm off to California tomorrow for the, uh, oh, the so much fun. It's going to be yeah, weird. It's going to be on a different time zone, but I you know. know, I know I'll, I'll be back quickly though. It's just a couple of days, but, um, yeah, but, uh, it was great to see you guys and a great night tonight. I think. Thanks ladies. Thanks,
All right, everybody. Have a great night. Bye.